All right, here's an assembled 308 AR-10 using the Matrix Arms lower and upper receiver set that you can get on primary arms for 160 bucks. I put this gun together and developed a load for it and was not, was not having any jams whatsoever. Everything was working fine. And I was using P-Mags, okay? So a P-Mag will insert empty with the bolt closed without a problem. Now when I was loading, when I was load developing, I would just put three or four or five rounds in these to test each set so there wasn't significant uh, pressure upward with a full magazine and I really didn't have any problems. It wasn't until I developed the load and started loading the 20 round P-Mags where you have significant upward uh, spring pressure with upward force on the rounds that I began having problems. So with this P-Mag here, if we were to load it say with four rounds, bolt, bolt closed, you can get it to go in pretty simply. All right, and the gun was cycling no problem. So that's four rounds. Let's put five, six, seven, eight, I'll grab some from over here. Nine, ten. So that's fully loaded ten round P mag. And by the way, this gun is empty. Same force will not seat the mag. In fact, you can grip it with both hands and try to get that mag to seat in there not going to happen. It isn't until you force it that you can get around in there. So let me hypothesize what the problem was. Each of these rounds were the jams that jam cartridges and I don't know if you're going to be able to see that. Can you zoom in on the bullet? Mm -hmm and they would all get caught in the same way. There's the uh, feed ramp into the bullet, but not at the tip. These jams uh, would occur with one bullet trying, or one cartridge trying to extract, not being able to get out in time, and the bolt would come over and ride the live round over the one that was trying to extract, and it would get hung up. So you'd, you'd have a traffic jam inside the ejection port and you couldn't get more than one or two shots off with a full P-Mag before getting that jam. Okay, so we have uh, 10 rounds. I'm going to put a piece of uh, non-live ammo on top here. And what I want to simulate, I'll go ahead and open the bolt, lock it back, too much force on the bolt and it's hanging it up. So right there, the bolt is having to override this force to pick up the next round, which was causing uh, obvious issues with feeding. All right, so what I did then to try, and uh, I tried three different mags for one, uh, just to see if any of them would allow for that bolt to cycle better, and none did. So I took measurements, and they all measured uh, higher than when I inserted them in other AR-10s that I've built on non-matrix 
receiver sets. So I took the cheapest mag I could find, which is a little hex mag here, it's polymer, and I cut a new height into the mag catch here on the magazine so that it would engage the mag catch sooner and therefore let the magazine uh, be lower inside the receiver. Then I built up a new shelf on the bottom using JB Weld so that uh, you didn't have a lot of slop in there. So what you have here is a modified hex mag, bolt closed, empty, that inserts just fine. If we put five rounds into it, okay, there you go, it'll lock in, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten rounds like the PMAG we just had. Okay. Able to do that without much pressure. Uh, let's put a non live mag, or non live round. So this would be eleven. See if that bolt will come back. So there you go, it's not getting hung up any longer. Alright, let's see if we can get to uh, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 17 rounds in this, I believe this is a 20 round hex mag, bolt closed, okay, so I'm going to retest this gun with the modified hex mag to see if it doesn't jam because the bolt isn't hanging up on the top of the lips and what we did with the modification is we basically uh, allowed for 4.0445 inches of drop in the magazine in the upper receiver to allow that interference to get cleared up so that's the uh, modification I'm having to make with the matrix receiver set 308